Hi everyone, Bill Fairman, Carolina Capital Management, along with Jonathan Davis. He is also with Carolina Capital Management. You may have met him in a previous recording. Uh, Wendy will be joining us for a, a later episode. Um, she always likes to say that she's the one that does all the work. So <laughs> apparently she is because she's not here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now, most of you who join us usually see this nice little brick wall behind us. Just so you'll know, that's fake. <laughs> we have a, a green screen that's behind us. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But this is really our conference room in our office. And we do have some fancy panels that are not just for looks, but they're also acoustic panels. So it sounds a little better in here. You don't hear much of an echo. So by the way, make sure you share and, and like. Yes our podcast and our, and our videos, please. You can contact us at carolinahardmoney.com. Again, carolinahardmoney.com. Now we do talk a lot about investing. Yes. And if you're going to the website, there's a tab that says investors. If you want to find more information out about the investment side of things, click on the investor tab and that'll, that'll take you to where you can, learn more about loaning your money or investing in our fund. Now, before I get started with anything, I have to do the disclaimer. We're not selling any type of security or any kind of a stock. This is strictly educational purposes only. You must read your PPM, which is also a word for the prospectus. There are risks with, with any investment. Uh, consult your financial advisor your mileage may vary. <laughs> that said, so this is the end of the year for us. A lot of companies like to just do, and, and we're a smaller fund. We're a boutique fund. You know, we don't have thousands of, of investors in our fund. As a matter of fact, our, nor, nor do we want thousands no, of investors. That's right. Yeah. Our PPM, our, our fund documents actually state that we cannot have, it puts a cap at 500 investors. Mm -hmm. I think our current number is right around 90. Okay. Right? Yeah. That sounds right. So here's what we like to do at the end of the year. Instead of doing a broadcast or sending out a letter that says how we've done, we... Charts and graphs. Everyone loves charts and graphs. Yeah. Yeah. Pie, pie charts. Yeah. What we like to do is send out an invitation to all of our investors mm -hmm. and schedule a 15 to 30 minute meeting with them and go over how we did for the year. Yeah. What our expectations are for the following year and then find out from them personally how we can better serve them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that, that fits into kind of what we talked about last time I was on here where we're not trying to build a machine that we have to feed. And that's not just on the lending side. That's on the fund investor side. Sure. Like, do you want to do you want to call ten thousand people and tell them what's going on and hear all their complaints? Uh, I would have to start before a long time before the year ended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's it's not our goal to to grow on the lending side nor on the investment fund size to that amount. We like the personalized service that we can offer. Right, and so. while we don't talk about returns on these shows. Cause again, you have to read the prospectus <laughs> when you do have that large machine you have to feed mm -hmm. uh, and you're having to deploy lots of capital. What typically happens to the yield? Well, you, you end up, so when you build something like that, you're sacrificing one of two things and it's always one or the other and usually both, but you're sacrificing your personal relationship with those investors. Mm -hmm. And then you're also sacrificing yield. Like, and usually it's both. Right. Yeah. What, what happens with a lot of the larger funds is you have capital that can't be deployed mm -hmm. in a timely manner. Yep. So the capital that's sitting there and not being deployed is a drag on the yield. Yeah. It's not working money. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the same time, if you have too much capital working or not working rather, you have this tendency of, perhaps making it work in a higher risk situation that you're, you would yeah. like to, because you yeah. need to get the money work. Yeah. You make poor credit decisions based on a uh, need to get the capital right. moving. Yeah. And then the only way to combat that is by having really low yields. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. You, yep. And you know, while that's can be safer and it is safer, 
you, you might as well put your money in the bond market. Yeah, for a lot of those returns. Yeah, yeah that's very, very similar. You're right. Yeah, you're not going to get a ton there. So we're, we're in the middle of our calls and it's funny the, the the different investors and how they all of them, by the way, uh, really appreciate the fact that we're we're calling them and, and doing those personal touches, right? Yeah, and uh, several are you know raving and just shocked. You all do this, <laughs> you know? I have because you know the thing is, Bill mentions before we don't want all of someone's money. We want them to diversify just like we diversify, and the people who we talk to are none of our other fund managers are calling us and, you know, having these conversations. Well, part of that is twofold. And I'm going to be honest with you. We're always looking for capital. So if you're calling people and talking about how well you did, you can always ask, do you have any friends that <laughs> are accredited investors as a, as a way of asking for, for more capital without taking all their capital. I, again, we, we want them to be diversified, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're always asking for, for more capital because it's, uh, I would rather have our investors make the return than have these larger funds make the return. Yeah. And when you you're operating a, a smaller fund like ours, you're, you're, you're partnering a lot with institutional capital in order to, constantly have enough money to deploy. Mm -hmm. See, in our case, because we are smaller and we are really entrenched in the investment community, investor community, we have lots of deal flow. Yes. And our problem always is we have more deal flow than we have uh, capital to deploy. Mm -hmm. So the only way we can do that is by, in a lot of cases, selling off loans that are in our portfolio to recapitalize. So we have money to make new loans with. And then at the same time, we also partner with other companies where maybe we have 20% of the loan mm -hmm. or 25% of the loan or 50% of the loan. But that's the way we're able to make loans and utilize that capital, keep that capital working. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, because we are the people that find the deals, we're able to do what with, with these partners? Yeah, we're able to arbitrage yield spread because they are seeking deal flow because right. I think we actually had a conversation earlier today with mm -hmm. an investor just about this. And they said, well, that doesn't make sense. Why would someone give you yield spread you know, on their side if they're bringing most of the money? Like, because they're built to find money and aggregate that money. They aren't built to find deals. So we are uniquely positioned. We we're built to find deals. Sure. Yeah. We're, we're also getting paid because we have connections. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if, if you're doing loans on your own and you know, lots of people that need loans and you're, you know, you have the wherewithal to underwrite them yourself, you know, you can find your own arbitrage yourself. You have people that have money that would like to deploy it you have friends or people that you know that need it, mm -hmm. uh, you can put a little bit of your money with it and do the same thing. Yeah. Take most of the money from somebody else. You essentially, and we'll, let's, let's give them an example. So let's say we make a loan at 10% and the other party who has most of the cash, who isn't out there and, and has the connections to find people that need the money they're happy to get 8%. Yeah. So you keep the 2% difference. So let's say it's a hundred thousand dollar loan. You're putting up 25,000. Mm -hmm. You're getting 10% on your $25,000. The person's putting up $75,000. They're getting 8% and you're getting the 2% difference on the other $75,000. Right. Yeah. And then if you're charging points on these loans, mm -hmm you get the majority of the points, if not all of the points on the total hundred thousand dollar loan. Yeah. So that takes your 10% yield mm -hmm. way up at probably oh. 16, 17, 18, even I higher. Mean, yeah. It's, it's, it's high. I mean, cause on the 75, you're adding $15,000 of additional income to the $25,000 investment. Right. Like that's significant. And, and don't do this secretly. I mean, 
there's nothing wrong with you making money. Heck, you're bringing the deal to the table. <laughs> this other person would not have access to your deal otherwise, right? I mean, it's the whole, like, you know, why do brokers get paid? Right. You know, they're valuable. The relationship is valuable. When you bring something to the table that otherwise wouldn't be there, you are valuable right. and you should be compensated for it. And we're just doing it on a, you know, a larger scale, mm -hmm. right? So that's part of how we're, the, the market currently, there, there, we're awash in money. Now you said you saw a deal that was in the fives. Yeah. I just had one come, an advertisement uh, come in my email today where it was uh, fix and flip loans and it was 7.49% interest. And they didn't charge you any interest on the funds that were used for the rehab so until was, you actually drew it out. So it was non-Dutch. So yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, as a smaller fund, we can't do that and give our investors a decent return. No, because then that's lazy capital. That's not making right. so, yield. Yeah. So in order for us to compete with those kind of rates and still be able to do that, we need to be able to arbitrage. Uh, the difference in what we're charging and what we're selling some of these for or participating in ourselves. So yeah. as a fund, we, we are conservative in nature. We're always trying to stay in the single family side of things. We're trying to stay in the affordable housing market, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That said, we do the same thing in multifamily, but with the multifamily deals, we're going to participate with, with other investors. Sometimes it's insurance companies, sometimes it's in institutional capital, Yeah. but we're able to take the single family loans where we're not going to make that much money on them and then take the multifamily loans and make up the, the yield difference that we're not able to get with the single family uh, in, inside the fund and still be quite diversified because yeah. we're in it at a smaller percentage. Yeah. I mean, the beauty of it is, you know, if we, if we get down the weeds real quick, it's, the single family loans are highly liquid. We can sell those to anyone at any time. They are the most liquid of any security instrument that we have out there, you know, whether, you know, because you know, commercials is more illiquid or specialized assets is more illiquid just because there's less buyers for it. So with the compressed rates that we're seeing on the single family side, it's not that we don't want to do those because they are so liquid. We want to do those and that's what you churn. That's what you keep turning over, sure. you know, month after month, quarter after quarter. And then the longer term commercial loans that you are participating in or arbitraging, those are the 12 to 18 month longer terms, but they have that higher coupon rate that they're creating. Right. So with the two of those going together, the churning and the long term, you create an ideal yield for an investor while utilizing multiple mechanisms. Right. Yeah. And at the same time, we're able to offer competitive rates to the borrowers. Uh, that, exactly. That are doing the yes. uh, single family fix and flip as well as the, the, the people that are fixing to hold property. Uh, and we actually were starting to do some long-term yes. uh, rental programs too. Yes. Again, we're not holding those in our fund, but we have other lenders that will take those from us, but we have access to them, mm -hmm. right? Yes, we do. And, and in the meantime, the fund still makes money on those. Which, we which wouldn't do it otherwise. That's right. Yeah. And it's funny, we were talking about getting into the weeds. We tend to do this. We forget that not everybody works in our business. <laughs> We've been doing this a long time. And it's funny with our, our conversations with our investors, you, everybody has a different personality type and a different makeup. Uh, some people are more passive than others. It's funny, I, I'll explain what it is we do, and somebody will ask me 72 questions, which is fine. I'm happy mm. to answer them. And then you'll have some that'll just say, All right, here's a check. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they yeah. won't ask anything. But. What was the one? Are you, uh, are, you, are you making money? Yes, we're making money. Well, you're communicating because you, you've called me. Oh, my God, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, that's all you're interested in. All right. Well, when you're not making money, I want it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that, that's part of the beauty of having the, the smaller boutique funds is that you're able to communicate 
you know, directly with the fund managers, the people that are running the deals, mm -hmm. you know, you get into these, these larger funds and good yeah. luck trying to yeah. talk to the managers. Well, <laughs> and the, one of the beautiful things is we, we not only recap what we did the year before, and not only do we tell them what our goals are mm -hmm. for the coming year, it's how we're going to achieve those goals. Sure. So you're running more or less the kind of secret sauce, if you will, sure. by your investors and saying, Hey, does this make sense to you? Do you have questions about this? And you know, you have, we have some that had, you know, multiple questions. Well, how are you doing this? How is this achieved? You know, and we, and we answer those and then some are just like, Oh yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. We love that. Sure. So it's, it, it builds that interaction and it's a, I think it's a great tool that we can offer our investors. And a lot of you folks that uh, invest in the stock market are asking, well, how is this any different from, you know, an earnings report coming up and then the, the, the CEO is explaining how the earnings were derived and yeah. what their forecast is going forward. Well, mm -hmm you're not in a room with a thousand people <laughs> or on a conference call with a thousand people. You actually get to ask questions directly, not listening to someone else ask the question. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot more personal. And again, you can ask individual questions about your investment, yeah. not specifically how the, uh, how the company is doing. Now, you know, granted with what we do, there's, only one way you can invest, <laughs> which is as, as an equity member. So, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, you can still throw some scenarios out there that's e easy for us to, to answer. Yeah. Versus we try our best. You're not going to be able to do that in these calls that the CEOs do for, you know, each quarter when, when they're giving out their, their reports. And, and by the way, most of the time it's the uh, big giant investor in those funds that get the call or, it's the business reporters that are asking the call. They're, they're not even investors in the fund. They're just reporters that are going to mm -hmm. be on the business channels or, or be in the wall street journal type of folks. Any last tips, comments? I think the only comment would be that not, we just don't only explain what we're doing to the investors. We take commentary from them and suggestions we realize that we're not always the smartest people in the room. And if we are, we tend to, we try to leave that room. So. <laughs> yeah. It's not good to be in a room when you're the smartest person in it. No, you're no. not getting anything back from it. <laughs> and a lot of our investors are very, very savvy yeah. and offer a lot of good insights into things that you and I would never think of just Absolutely. because we're too close to, to the situation. Well, the best thing as a fund manager you can have is an educated investor. Mm -hmm. And we want to have the most educated investors in our fund. One reason is selfish. If I have an educated investor in our fund, I have to do less work explaining things. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And while we don't have a thousand fund investors, you know, we all have busy days and, we're constantly asking the, or answering the same questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it gets a little tough. Yeah. Again, we want people to ask questions, uh, but we also love the educated investor and we try yes. to educate everyone the best we can. So you want to find out more about our fund, carolinahardmoney.com. Again, carolinahardmoney.com. Go to the investor tab and click that on and you'll be directed to, uh, fund information where you can get started. Okay. Again, don't forget to like and share us. Um, we also have some other videos that are available in archive. So please check those out as well. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next show. Hi, if you really like this show, what you can do is you can check out some of our other shows that might or might not pertain to it. You can check up there. You can check over here. You can check down here. Check it out. Don't be afraid to like us, right? Subscribe. <laughs> do that too. Subscribe to our page and hit like. We'd love to have you do that. Thanks.